Logos and Obsidian are two great pieces of software for studying the Bible and taking notes on what you've studied, and then creating resources to share with people as well, to share that knowledge, like sermons or small group materials. However, there are some big differences between these two pieces of software. They each have their own strengths and their own weaknesses. And trying to find a way to use them together to get those strengths of each tool can be a bit tricky. So in this video, I want to share with you what I've learned over the last three years using both of these tools of the strengths and weaknesses of each tool, how they are better at certain things than others, and then propose a path forward, how you can use these two to complement each other. But it will also be useful if you're considering which one to choose. This may help you guide your decision as well. So let's dive in. Logos Bible software is in its 10th version, and that means it's been around for a long time, a really long time, since plastic CDs and floppy disks were a thing long time. And that's part of its strength. It is a dedicated application suite of tools to help you study the Bible. At its core, it gives you options for texts such as the Bible, as well as checks from church history, modern monographs, Bible encyclopedias, dictionaries, and a whole catalog of resources, anything you could want for academic studies, personal devotionals, or anything like that. If you're a Christian and there's a book you want or a tool you want, it's probably that. As well as that, it has its own selection of tools like uh, note-taking tools, highlighting tools, which are far more customizable than something you get in Kindle or anything like that. You can create your own set of highlighting preferences. So if you wanted something that highlights about Greek text, you can do that there. You can organize your notes via tags and in notebooks, and you can highlight, your highlights will come into there as well. And you also have a whole suite of tools for things like uh, guiding you through exegeting a passage by a certain process, writing a sermon. It's It's got a lot. It would take a whole video to explain everything that's in there. And even then it would be hours long. Basically, if you want to study the Bible, it is the tool for you. However, that hints at two of its disadvantages. One, it is highly tailored, highly specified for studying the Bible. Yes, I do know people who use it for other purposes, such as using the, uh, the prayer and uh, reminders feature to help keep track of people they should contact and um, like a, a small uh, CRM tool there or using the notes to include notes on other topics. But really, it's designed for Bible books and Bible resources. And the other thing there is that it is this complicated tool with lots of things that are going on. And you really do have to spend some time learning through everything to unlock its full potential. But the good thing about Logos is even if you can't unlock its full potential, you can get so much power, so much value from just knowing a few tools that it makes it a really useful suite of applications for pastors, for any Christian as well. It also is quite expensive. Packages cost a lot because they often include a lot of books and also Logos is on a, uh, an update schedule about every couple of years. So in a couple of years time, if you want to get the newest version of Logos, which will bring new features, then you'll have to pay quite a bit again. So those are its strengths and weaknesses. Let's move on to Obsidian. Obsidian is the other end of the spectrum. It is a plain text-based local storage note-taking application. Really, it just reads and writes markdown files. That's all it does. But because of its simplicity, it has a whole community around it who are creating extra resources, plugins that add in additional functionality, and also using it to do lots of personal knowledge management type things, including Christians like me who have used it to put a Bible within the vault, and then they can take notes and connect them to the Bible, much like you could do with Logos as well. You could highlight some text and take a note on it, and it would be linked there as well. So if that's what you're looking to do, you can do it in 
uh, Obsidian, or you can do that in Logos. However, with Obsidian, you could have any topics you want, and that gives the potential for seemingly disparate topics to cross over and overlap. Let's say that you are a business person. Uh, maybe you've taken a note on some insights about uh, setting up a business, and then you think about a Bible verse and how that's relevant. And so you look up that Bible verse and link it to this business insight. And perhaps that sparks an idea in you about how this is actually slightly different. And perhaps there's a different way forward that, uh, that would be even better. That's the potential that you could have with Obsidian. That it isn't just bound to Bible resources. It isn't just bound to the notes that you have there. It could be something else. The other big difference that Obsidian has straight out of the box is it uses links to connect notes. And you have this knowledge graph that you build up, something which is absent from Logos. And so using Obsidian, you can have a different way to connect ideas, a different way to connect knowledge, as the example before. And that can be very useful for some people. Plus, it's also free to download and free to start as opposed to hundreds of dollars. And with a copyright free version of the Bible, you can have a version of the Bible there, which you can take notes on, connect your notes instantly. One clear cut example of where you're going to want to use Obsidian over Logos is if you are interested in more topics. If you're interested in topics which aren't just the Bible, in fact, if you don't want to do Bible study at all, then you should definitely choose Obsidian. However, Going to the other end, if you're a pastor who is only using Christian resources, then probably you're going to want to use something like Logos. Most of us, though, even pastors, want to do something which is in between, where we want to have information from different sources coming in. Perhaps a book we've read on Kindle, which is about something else, where we want that imported straight in, like you can do in Obsidian with the Readwise integration. So there's the key difference. Logos is really just dedicated to Bible study and Obsidian is much more wide, much more open about a lot more topics. That can be a key distinguisher. If you're trying to choose between the two, maybe that will decide it for you. But if you're looking to take notes just on the Bible, let's look at a few of the key reasons why you should choose one or the other. First of all, cost. Obsidian is free to get started. Logos costs you money to get started. Maybe that will make your decision. Although you can try a Faith Life Connect trial, which will allow you to pay something like $7 a month. And then you can try all of Logos's features. And that can be a way to see if it's worth the investment for you. Next, reading experience. Obsidian has the advantage of allowing you to choose a different theme which can make it easier to read fonts there. However, Logos provides a much better reading experience in my opinion, especially on the app. If you have a lot of eBooks there, then that's going to be better. In fact, that's also a struggle with Obsidian. You have to import all your documents rather than being able to buy them online like you can with Logos. When it comes to note-taking, Obsidian clearly has the advantage. It's tools like linking of notes, make it far more powerful and more advanced, more up-to-date, more modern than the system that there is within uh, Logos. Now, that's nothing against Logos. Logos has great core features like notebooks and uh, tags as well that can help you to take the notes that you want and organize them in an easy way. However, Obsidian just has a few extra features which give it an advantage. Logos also has its study tools, which really separate it from Obsidian. You can highlight a word and then you'll see what it was in Greek or Hebrew, and then you can do a word study on that. You have tools to help you look at a timeline of what was going on in the Bible. This is just something which nobody's created for Obsidian yet. But that hints at the advantage of Obsidian. In theory, you could add any customization if someone can develop it. So if someone wanted to create a map study tool or a timeline tool for Bible resources, they could. I don't know if anyone would, if they have the resources, the knowledge to be able to do that. That is something that they could do in theory. But my personal opinion is that these shouldn't be viewed as competing resources, but ones that we should try and use together. 
And so that's where we get into this tricky little section. How do you make the most of both of these resources? One is perhaps better for note taking, one is better for reading and studying, but reading and studying includes a lot of note taking. So one option that you have is to try and duplicate everything you do. You could duplicate your notes in Obsidian, bring them over into Logos. You could duplicate your notes in Logos and bring them over into Obsidian by copying and pasting. There isn't an easy automatic way. If there is, please let me know. I would love to know. The next option is to keep things separate. So you could use Logos for your Bible notes and you could use Obsidian for your non-Bible notes. But then you have the problem that you're not going to have these crossover effects where you have two different fields and then you see insights from each of them. Admittedly, this can happen because in your head it's still happening, but you're not going to be able to see it on paper. And I would hope that you would never take notes which are just completely separated from Christian thought and worldview if that's, if that's the way that you think. Another option you have is to dedicate each one to its own resources. So in Logos, if you have a book, if you have a Bible dictionary, something like that, then you keep those notes in Logos. On Obsidian, if you have a Kindle book or something like that and you have an automatic import, then you have your notes for that one. This is a good system that has some clear boundaries and will kind of end up creating the same effect as the previous one of keeping Bible notes in one place and other notes in another place, but it doesn't force you to have that mental distinction between two. At the same time, you then have issues of like, if you're attending a lecture or a sermon, where should you take your notes? Where should you put them in? One more final feature of Logos, which actually gives it an edge over Obsidian, is the simplicity of its linking Bible verse system. In Logos, you can just write a Bible reference as you would normally, and that will create an anchor to that Bible verse. You don't have to think of any special syntax. In Obsidian, you have to write a um, link in a very specific way with these double square brackets, and you have to link every single verse if you want to have that link connected to each one. You can't do the first and the last one because that's not how it's set up. So that makes it a real strength for Logos, especially if you're taking sermon notes quickly, it allows you to enter them fast. But what's my system? Well, my conclusion has been to try and use the tools for what they do best and to focus on their strengths rather than try and force their weaknesses to make sense. So I've kept all my course study notes in Obsidian because it's an easier system to take notes in and it's easier to organize them, easier to have my assignments, easier to have uh, notes that I'm preparing for an assignment there and then organize it like that. At the same time, when I attend a lecture, I tend to take my notes in Logos because of the simpler uh, Bible reference note taking that allows me to capture those quicker. When I'm attending a sermon in uh, person and I'm taking notes, then I'm using Logos because I can save those notes quicker. I'd rather have a book in Logos because of the extra highlighting tools. But then back to Obsidian, I will keep notes on other topics that I'm doing and I will do my brainstorming and generating ideas, what I want to share, of, you know, a sermon calendar or something like this, coming up with the initial thoughts and thinking in there. So that makes Logos much more of a place for like final essays, final sermons, stuff like that, and Obsidian a place for thinking and working through ideas. What about you? I'm not saying that my system is perfect. It still is a bit creaky and there are cases where I'm still not sure which I should use. But if you have developed a system, if you use both of these tools, I'd love to know how you use them and how they fit together. Leave a comment below and subscribe if you'd like more videos on how to use Obsidian or Logos to help you in your Christian faith. See you next time.